Today I've got a nice kind of crazy looking integral. So we're going to end up evaluating the integral from 0 to pi of i to the tangent of x dx, where by i I mean the square root of minus 1. And in fact, this is really the principal square root of minus 1, just to be careful. And this is a little bit inspired by the following integral, which I did previously on the channel. And so that's the integral from 0 to pi of tangent of x to the i. It's just here we're swapping the base and the exponent. We're going to use the following complex exponential form of the imaginary unit i as e to the i pi over 2. That's inspired by Euler's formula that says e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta, along with the complex plane. So the argument of i is pi over 2, and then obviously its distance from the origin is 1. So that's kind of written in that graph right there. Okay, so using this expression for i, let's get started. So we'll rewrite this as the integral from 0 to pi of e to the pi over 2 to the power tangent. And so using exponent rules, that's going to be e to the i pi over 2 times tangent of x, and then dx, like that. And now we'll use Euler's formula, like we kind of hinted at before, and that'll give us the integral from 0 to pi of the cosine of pi over 2 times tan x plus i times the sine of pi over 2 times tan x. Great. So we have something that looks a little bit like that. Now, before we get started with this integral as a whole, let's just look at this portion right here. So the portion that involves the sine. So let's maybe write that. We'll consider the integral from 0 to pi of sine of pi over 2 tangent of x dx. And we'll do this by making a substitution. And so what's the substitution that we'll make? Well, let's take u and set it equal to pi minus x. So we have pi minus x like that. But notice that means that x is equal to pi minus u, and du is equal to minus dx, which is the same thing as saying dx is equal to minus du. And then what happens to the bounds of integration? So if x is equal to 0, that tells us u is equal to pi. And likewise, if x is equal to pi, that tells us that u is equal to 0. OK, so we've got a lot of stuff there involving this change of variable. So exactly how are we going to use that? Well, we're going to do a pretty classic trick, and that is to take this integral and write it as 1 half it plus itself and apply the substitution only to one part. But maybe instead of introducing a half in, let's just multiply this thing by 2. And then whatever we get for the value of this integral in the end, we'll just multiply it by a half. Okay, so that's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the sine of pi over 2 times the tangent of x dx. So there I didn't change anything at all. And then plus the integral from pi to 0 of, let's see, the sine of pi over 2 times the tangent of um, pi minus u times minus du, like that. Okay, so this is using the substitution right here. So notice we had our bounds change as from this rule and then everything else change as from that rule. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat. It's not really a cheat, but it's just a simplifying procedure. I'm going to do a trivial change of variables here back from u to x. So I'll just replace all of the u's with x's. And so that's totally allowed because u is a dummy variable. Okay, so here I'll replace this back with x and I'll replace this with x as well. Okay, nice. Now I'm going to use some trigonometric identities. So the tangent of x minus u is the same thing as minus the tangent of x. So let's see what that leaves us with. We've got a minus sign wrapped up here. We've got a minus sign wrapped up here. Those two can cancel. And then we can take this 
pi to zero and change the sign if we change the order of integration, so zero to pi. And then we're left with two copies of the same integral with an opposite sign, so that means those add up to zero, but if twice this integral is equal to zero, then the integral itself is equal to zero, which means we don't need to worry about this bit right here, and so we can get rid of it and just focus on this first bit, which is exactly what we'll do. So we just got done arguing that our goal integral is the same thing as the integral from zero to pi of cosine pi over two times tangent of x, which is already nice because there's nothing involving a complex um, number there as there is in the original. Okay, so that's good. Now we're gonna do another change of variables. I'll use u again, and the change of variables we'll use here is u equals the tangent of x over two. So it might seem like we might wanna take u to be equal tangent of x, but using a half angle formula or a double angle formula, kind of their duals of each other for the tangent, this actually gives us a bit of better simplification. Okay, so if u is equal to the tangent of x over two, that tells us that the tangent of x is equal to the tangent of x over two plus x over two. And then we can apply our sum angle formula for tangent here to rewrite this as two times the tangent of x over two all over one minus the tangent squared of x over two. That's actually pretty good news in terms of our substitution. We can write this tangent of x totally in terms of the substitution, and that would be two times u over one minus u squared, like that. Okay, so if u is equal to tangent of x over two, what is du? Well, we'll use the fact that the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so that gives us a half secant squared x over two dx. Now, what about the bounds of integration? So if x is equal to zero, that implies that u is equal to the tangent of zero, but the tangent of zero is zero. And then as x approaches pi right here, that means that u is approaching positive infinity, just because tangent has a vertical asymptote at pi over two, and from the left, that's going to positive infinity. Okay, so now using all of this stuff over here, there's kind of a lot of pieces, we can rewrite this with our new variable. So in fact, this will be equal to two, then the integral from zero up to infinity, of the cosine of, let's see, we have pi times u over one minus u squared. So the two cancels from this pi over two here. And then let's see, in the denominator, we will have exactly u squared plus one du. So how do we have u squared plus one in the denominator? Well, that's from inverting this formula right here and then using a trig identity of, let's see, tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. I'll let you work out those details. Okay, but now we use the fact that this is an even function. So cosine is even. And then this thing on the inside is odd, meaning that cosine may be composed with this is even. And then furthermore, the denominator is even. So we can take this two, remove it, and then make the integral from minus infinity to infinity. So I'll simultaneously do that and also change my variable back to x. So I'll have the integral from minus infinity to infinity. I have cosine of pi times x over one minus x squared over x squared plus one dx. Okay, so now we'll bring that up and then start to work on this integral. So we just got done showing that our goal integral was equal to this thing right here. We have the integral from minus infinity to infinity cosine evaluated at this rational function over one plus x squared. Now we're gonna use complex analytic method invol and methods involving residues to finish this thing off. So I've got a whole course in complex analysis on the second channel math major if you wanna look more at the details of this type of calculation. So here's what we'll consider now. So we'll do a little bit of a side calculation. 
So let's consider instead of this, the integral over some contour C, which we'll describe in a picture of e to the i times pi z over one minus z squared over one plus z squared dz. So you might say, well, why am I using this e to the i pi z over one minus z squared? Well, that's exactly because we can use Euler's formula to decompose this into the cosine and the sine. So this is gonna be cosine of pi z over one minus z squared plus i sine pi z over one minus z squared. So since we've got the cosine, in the end, we'll actually wanna look at the real part of this. But that's a little bit getting ahead of ourselves. So what contour do we need? Well, the contour will have to include the real axis, or at least a portion of the real axis which limits to the entire real axis because we want the integral from minus infinity to infinity. And then it probably also needs to include one of the poles of this. Notice we've got two poles here. That's where the denominator is zero at plus and minus i. So the contour in this case will have the following shape. So we'll go here from minus r to plus r. And then up here we'll have i times r. And then we'll have this half circle. So something like this. We'll wanna orient this positively. Great. So since r is trending off to infinity, we can assume for all important values of r, it's bigger than one, which gives us this zero of our denominator. In other words, the pole of this function inside. And this is the only pole inside of this region here. And then let's maybe just point out that this is our region C, and then maybe we'll call this whole region right here D. So here, let's maybe shade this in. We have this is equal to D, and we have the boundary of D is equal to C. Okay, so this is gonna be equal to the sum of, or two pi i times the sum of the residues of all of the poles inside of our region D, but there's only a single pole, and that is I. So the value of this is two pi i times the residue of our function e to the i pi z over one minus z squared over one plus z squared at i. But then this is a single order pole here, given the fact that this one plus z squared factors as z minus i times z plus i. So this is our pole of order one at i. And there's a trick for calculating these when you'd have a pole of order one at i. And that is to plug i or whatever you're lo looking at here into the numerator and then into the derivative of the denominator. So let's do that. So this is gonna be two pi i. So plugging i into this numerator, we'll have e to the i times pi times i, so that'll be negative pi over one minus i squared. So let's see, one minus i squared will be one minus negative two, so that'll be two. And then plugging into the derivative of the denominator will give us two i like that. But notice some nice things cancel here. So this i cancels with this i, and then this two cancels with this two, leaving us with pi times e to the minus pi over two. Okay, so let's maybe summarize this data right here at the top of the board, and then we can finish the calculation. So in the last board, we calculated this associated complex integral that will relate to our real integral right here. So notice that if we take the real part of this integral along this real axis, we get exactly our goal integral. So that's important to notice. So let's note that we can take this pi times e to the minus pi over two and write it as the integral from minus infinity up to infinity of the cosine of pi x over one minus x squared over one plus x squared dx plus what's going on with the integral on the top part of the circle, which I've called gamma r. 
So this is going to be the limit as r goes to infinity of the integral, like I said, along gamma r of e to the i z over 1 minus z squared all over 1 plus z squared dz. But now we'll play it a bit fast and loose. We'll use the fact that this numerator is approximately the same thing as e to the minus i over z, given that we have a quadratic term in the denominator and a linear term in the numerator. But if we're away from the origin, z equals zero, this thing is bounded. So I won't check that, but you guys can check that this thing is bounded. Again, maybe look at that full course if you want all of the really careful tricks here. But if that's bounded, and then we have this thing in the denominator, which is quadratic, then that tells us that this whole thing will have a limit of zero in the end. But if that thing has a limit of zero in the end, then this integral, which turned out to be equivalent to our goal integral, is equal to pi times e to the minus pi over two. So that gives us the value of our goal integral. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.